What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another super windy day every day I have to film. But I got a good one for you today. We're gonna be taking a look at this 2024 Chevy Camaro 2SS convertible in this beautiful radiant red tint coat color. Looks absolutely killer. We're gonna talk about everything that this vehicle has to offer. And unfortunately, we are gonna be saying goodbye to the Camaro, at least in its current state. So we've had this same sixth generation Camaro for like eight or nine years now. It really needs something new and we're not gonna get it in this kind of similar form factor that we've been seeing, at least probably not anytime soon. Maybe down the line, we will get an electric version of the Camaro, similar to what uh, Ford's done with the Mustang Mach-E, the Challenger being discontinued, all that kind of stuff. Maybe we'll see something different, maybe a hybrid, I don't know, but at least in this current combustion engine state, we are not gonna have another Camaro next year. It's gonna be taking a break for some time. But before it leaves, I did wanna grab it and make sure that we got it covered because there's a lot of great features that this vehicle has to offer. There's some places where you're really gonna notice its age, especially compared to other vehicles in the current Chevy lineup. Like I said, it's been around for quite a long time in this current state, so it's gonna look dated in some areas, but there's some really cool collector's editions that you can also get with this kind of last version of this generation of Camaro or the Camaro as we know it. We'll definitely have some videos and stills on screen so you can see those collector's editions. But enough of the preamble, let's get into this vehicle. So if we start up front here, as always, you have a very distinct front grille. The Camaro has always had a very unique styling in the front. It's very recognizable. It's iconic even. You've got a black Chevy bow tie here, this big black and red front grille with these accented grille pieces. You've got your SS badging because this is the SS trim. You've got LED headlights, LED daytime running lights. They even say Camaro on the inside. Absolutely super aggressive. You've got those little running lights down there. Body colored kind of splitter at the bottom. Really adds aggressiveness, kind of some ground effects there. Kind of faux carbon fiber, but plastic look here on the sides. You do have some ventilation on the hood right here and super aggressive sporty lines running down the front of the hood. All the body lines, again, are super recognizable too. You just look at this and you know it's a Camaro. No one has to tell you. Obviously, there's badging everywhere that will tell you. Now, this Camaro sits on these 20-inch, five-split-spoke, premium gray painted machine-faced aluminum wheels. An absolute mouthful on the sticker here. But they're a nice wide-open wheel, as you can see here. So you can see your brake calipers there. You do have Brembo Performance brakes there, which look really nice. And that is going to be paired with a limited slip differential and a performance suspension here on the 2SS. You do have a little silver Chevy bow tie in the center there, which is kind of cool. And then under the hood, you have three different engine options. The base engine is going to be a 3.6 liter V6 with 335 horsepower, 284 pound-feet of torque. That is going to be standard on the 1LT, 2LT, and 3LTs. And then you have two different available engines. So this one here has the 6.2 liter V8, which has 455 horsepower, 455 pound-feet of torque. That comes on the LT1, the 1SS, and the 2SS here that we have next to me. And then you have an additional supercharged 6.2 liter V8 that has 650 horsepower, 650 pound-feet of torque, and that is standard only on the ZL1, which is obviously an absolute beast. And you could pair with two different transmission options. There's a six-speed manual transmission and then a 10-speed automatic transmission. And then you can also pair it with an optional dual-mode exhaust. This has both the 10-speed automatic transmission as well as the dual-mode exhaust, which we'll take a listen to in just a second. You can see some classic Camaro badging here. You have these body-colored side mirrors. They look really good in this radiant red tint coat. Absolutely beautiful. Uh. <laughs> try to fold them, they don't fold. The mirrors do not fold. Do not try to fold them because it'll sound like you're trying to break them. You do have blind spot monitoring built in though. Pretty small mirrors, and that's something that I think really stands out to me when driving this vehicle. It's just, there's a lot of blind spots and it's hard to see in some certain places. So just something to keep in mind and we'll talk about that more on the test drive portion. Another note on the mirrors is they are heated and then the driver's side is auto dimming. So that's a nice feature. Again, this is the convertible. So you have the soft top convertible top up here in black, which looks really nice. Keyless access on the door handles. You have a capless gas tank right here. So then coming here to the back of the Camaro, again, super recognizable. Nobody has to tell you what this is. So you have a body colored spoiler up top here, and then there's actually a little camera that is on the middle post of the spoiler here, and that actually acts as your rear view mirror camera. So we can take a look at that inside. And then down here underneath, there's actually a little button where you can open the tailgate, and then there's another camera next to that. That is your standard rear view camera. 
camera. So the one that you'll see on the actual infotainment screen. So two different cameras in slightly different positions. It's kind of nice to have the one up on the spoiler because it allows you to see a little bit higher through that rearview mirror camera. You have a light here, these really cool sculpted taillights. We've had these for years, obviously, but they look really awesome. Black Chevy bow tie here. Now underneath here, there's a button here you can push to lift the tailgate. And again, really small little cargo area, but I do have my camera box back here as well as a tripod. You're not really buying this for the cargo space, but you could fit probably something like a golf bag. I don't golf, but it looks about the size of a golf bag back here. If you want to put down your convertible top, there has to be room for that. So there's like a, this little mat that comes up and clips here that blocks it so you don't fill that in. But if you're going to leave a convertible top up, you can drop that mat and then get a little bit of extra cargo space, which is nice. Here's your emergency escape. If anyone tries to lock you in the back of a Camaro, that would be unpleasant for sure. SS badging here, some parking sensors dotted around, and then you have quad exhaust tips that work with your dual mode exhaust, which let's take a listen to right now. that's pretty much everything here on the back end. It's actually pretty simplified because it doesn't have to be complicated. Everybody knows this iconic back end. But let's go ahead and jump inside. It's nice to be out of that direct wind at least and into this cabin. Now, don't get me wrong. I appreciate this cabin for what it is, right? This is an iconic vehicle. I don't want to disrespect it at all or the fans of this vehicle. But again, you can just tell where it's outdated and you can tell how compact it is. I think we're kind of moving away from these like super compact sports cars and into this kind of, sorry, cover your ears, Chevy fanboys, but kind of what the Mustang Mach-E did where it kind of took the iconic look, modernized it and stretched it out into more of this like compact SUV kind of feel to it. And maybe they do the same thing with the Camaro, although we do have the Blazer, which is basically already that. I would love to see an electric version of the Camaro in almost this exact state, but just with modern displays and things like that. I think that'd be absolutely sick. Have something that had like 590 horsepower, something like that, all electric would be killer. I hope they do that that'd be super cool but i know the traditionalists love having the big v8 all that kind of stuff not for me personally but i appreciate it and i understand why people like it but let's go ahead and just talk about everything that we've got in this cabin leather on the doors here and then some kind of hard touch plastic here you've got position memory for your seats and then you've got this nice led lighting that wraps around this little accent on the doors i've actually made a video on the led lighting when it first got introduced in the camaro several years ago but it goes around the infotainment display right here as well so great touch and you can completely customize that to your liking. So you've got all your mirror and window controls over here, a button to lift the tailgate up, more leather with accent stitching there, which feels nice. You've got your Bose premium audio system here on this 2SS. You've got your classic Camaro vents that you can twist shut, and then you can actually twist the entire frame to increase or decrease temperature inside the cabin. Really cool. That's something we see on the Blazer as well, which I've always been a fan of. I think it looks great. You do have a HUD on this vehicle. Some of these buttons don't feel the best. They're kind of clicky and kind of wobbly, which is interesting. Light wiper controls on the back. Nice big leather wrapped sport steering wheel here. USS badging, some accent stitching, perforations on the grips. Big Camaro word mark in the center. Classic. Love that. Buttons to change your volume and radio stations. You got your adaptive cruise. It is a heated steering wheel as well. And then you got your kind of voice control buttons. Paddle shifters for manual mode. And then past that, you do have kind of a hybrid display. So this is a little bit modern. You have two analog gauges and then you have a nice big digital display in the center but we've had this for so long you'd expect that if they were to modernize it they would just give you a fully digital display like we have in everything else that Chevy's making these days push to start engine button here again HUD up top there and then this display again is one of those things where you really see its age this is like a tiny like eight inch display and if this were a modernized Camaro cabin I think you'd have the big like 17 inch displays that Chevy is doing now here you just have this tiny little display this definitely isn't Chevy's most recent infotainment software but it's not the oldest either. You still have kind of some modern look to it. You've got on-screen climate control. You've got your ambient lighting customization, Wi-Fi hotspot, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, Bluetooth apps, Sirius XM radio, all that kind of stuff. And obviously if the vehicle was on, you could access the review camera. And then of course you can change the climate with these dials, but you do have a ton of manual buttons down here to turn it on 
Turn the fan speed, turn your defoggers on, sync your driver and passenger. This is a dual zone climate control system. You got your hazards here. And I really actually like the design of this center console here for a couple reasons. One, they don't give you a lot of piano black plastic, which I absolutely hate. It's not the highest quality material that they do give you. It's just hard touch plastic here, but it is easier to control the dirtiness level of it with this type of material. You do have some leather bolsters on the sides, then this nice leather armrest here that you can open up like this. You know, pretty small pocket here, but you can throw some stuff in there if you wanted to. Two cup holders here with more LED lighting on the inside. Got your drive mode selector, traction control button. That's important on these types of vehicles. And then you've got your 12 volt outlet right there as well. 10 speed automatic transmission here with the super nice polished Camaro badging up top. Perfect leather with stitching down the side and then a little bit of leather with accent stitching here as well. Rear view mirror up here, it's a two-way mirror so you've got your standard auto dimming rear view mirror as well as that rear view mirror camera that you can enable by flicking the switch. Buttons here for your dome lights right there, LED and then all your OnStar controls. And then you've got the button to automatically put down your convertible top. I'm not going to do that right now but I will show you guys on screen what that looks like. Now as far as these seating surfaces go, they are super comfortable, kind of sporty seats with some nice bolstering on the sides. They are perfect they're kind of a two-tone leather with this little accent. You have some SS badging dead center, which looks awesome. Accent stitching around the headrest and the body of the seat. Driver is an eight-way power adjustable seat with position, memory, and easy exit. And then you've also got a six-way power adjustable passenger seat. Both the driver and passenger are heated and ventilated seats, which is awesome. And you've got a little Qi-enabled wireless charging pad back here, basically in the second row. And speaking of that, you do have a second row, technically speaking, but we all know it's just for insurance purposes. That is not a practical second row, unless you have absolutely petite children or maybe a car seat, maybe back there you could do it. That's gonna be mainly for storage. You can put bags and backpacks and stuff back there, no problem. Passengers, no. But I am gonna to try to get back there so you guys can see what it looks like if an adult is sitting back there. Let's get in the back seat, say a prayer. Nice, super comfortable. No headroom at all, zero headroom. That's the approximate number from Chevy. I guess if the convertible top is down, then sure, you'll have some headroom because you have the sky. Back here, I have to lean all the way like this to have any headroom. So if you want to sit forward like this, sure. But again, this seat is not even back and I've got it scooted way, way up. This isn't that bad leg room wise. There's like an inch, a little less of leg room. You can tuck your feet up underneath. But again, this seat is way forward. It would never be like this for any normal person to be sitting there. Otherwise, you're just going to be sitting in the front seat. But I had this driver's seat back to where I would sit as a 6'1 driver, I'm gonna take my shoes off so I don't scuff up the back of this because I know I'm not gonna fit. <laughs> oh yeah, nice, classic. I love it, very comfortable ride. <laughs> I don't even think I could buckle in. I mean, you're not going anywhere. You're getting a wreck, you're not moving, right? You don't even need a seatbelt back here. Definitely wear your seatbelt, I'm joking. No adult is gonna be able to fit back here. I don't care what size you are. I'd have to turn my legs to the side. Well, actually, no. Never mind. I got him down there. You just have to shove it really hard. No leg room and you're pushing into the driver's seat and no headroom. Is it technically a back seat if you have no headroom or leg room? Or is it just an extension of your trunk? Comfortable. The seats are comfortable back here. It's crazy that they actually spent money on the materials for the seats back here. I know why they did it. I know why there's four seats. I understand. You don't have to tell me in the comments. It's still ridiculous. Nobody's sitting back here. You guys know that. All right, let's take the Camaro here for a little test drive. Let's get a start up. Ooh, there's a Silverado EV work truck right there. You guys might be seeing that on the channel soon. First and foremost, I'm talking really loudly because this car is loud. I'm really used to my Chevy Bolt. It doesn't make any noise. I'm also used to just vehicles that have smaller engines, you know, 2.0 liters, 1.5 liters. Like that's what everything has these days. So to drive something that has a V8 is very different for me. I'm not used to it. Even some of the big trucks I've driven, like the Silverados and stuff that have V6s and V8s and things, they're not as loud as this. Like this is designed to be loud. You can switch drive modes, which will tune the dual exhaust to a little bit more of a quieter sound under touring. We'll do both. So you can kind of hear what it sounds like inside the cabin. And it is coming through my lav mic, but I took off the processing so you'd be able to hear kind of the raw sound. So let's just go ahead and just boost it. This is on touring, by the way. You hear that little like, the crackle of I'll put it in the uh, sport now. Oof. <laughs> it's 
Maybe it's just because I'm so used to EVs. It doesn't have that instant torque to where it, you know, it doesn't like push you back like this. Like maybe the 650 horsepower ZL1 will, but just the normal non-supercharged 6.2 liter with the 455 horsepower pound-feet of torque, it doesn't just like throw you back. It's fast. Once you can feel it kind of latch on to where it actually goes, you can feel it, but it's not like a rocket ship or anything like that. Still fast and still sounds mean. And we're gonna take it on the highway and I'm gonna give it some real juice. This is city driving, right? So this is like your day-to-day -day 35 to 45 city streets type area. And we'll get a decibel reading so you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. And I'll be quiet and I'll show you over here what you can see. When you're cruising and not actually accelerating where you can hear the engine, it's right around like 66. When you can hear the engine noise, you're around 72. So it's loud. Like that's conversation level volume, right? So you kind of have to yell over the engine. I will also grant this is a soft top convertible. And I've noticed that even when sitting completely still with the car turned off, there's still a lot of noise coming from the back, especially where, you know, wind and outside noise gets through that soft top. So if you have the full, you know, non-convertible version with the hard top with all the you know ceiling and everything it's going to be probably a little bit quieter so that's at city street volume and then once we get up here i'll show you at idle so this is us sitting at idle right around 54 55 ish we're about to hop on the highway and we'll get a decibel reading when we're up there but before we get there just talking about this cabin like i said this is a very sporty driver centric cabin right it's not like all the way corvette to where the screen's tilted towards you it's like user friendly enough for the passenger everything's just feels molded and sculpted to be aggressive and sporty you know the center console area you're very like compressed and tucked in that feels good so it's interesting but like i said it does feel a little bit on the dated end so like the screen's not the newest screen dash isn't the newest dash you can tell that this thing needs to be updated and is on its way out in its current state and that's unfortunate because this is a classic classic vehicle and you don't really want to see it disappear but that just means that it can come back in a new version Version. That's really cool. That's what I like about it. It's just that hope of the future of what we could get from the Camaro in the near future. But now that we're on the highway, let's go ahead. And it is very loud. Like you can tell I'm like projecting. I'm almost yelling because of how loud just sitting in this vehicle is. Let's uh, go ahead and get up here, get some juice, and I'll start the decibel recorder. Yeah, so we're at like 77, 80 dBs. Like, that's loud, man. Man, that exhaust sounds nice, though. Ooh, you hear those little crackles at the end there? I'm not like a sports car guy. I don't dislike them, and I like driving them, but like as my daily, I would never want one as my daily. It's just too much. I'd love to have a secondary one that's like super sporty and fun to drive, but I don't need all that like audio and stuff that some people like. I like my cars to be really quiet. This is the opposite of that for me. I really feel like I'm having a yell. Now, as far as the suspension goes, you can tell it's more of a sportier suspension. It handles kind of like a sports car, like it's stiff and you feel everything on the road. So I originally, when I was driving, I kind of felt like it was a little bit smooth, but it was really just, I was on like perfect pavement. The second you hit any little imperfections in the roads, like you can feel you're kind of boom, 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 going over it. And the car, because of like the power of it, it, it kind of rattles back and forth because that engine is just humming all the time and it's really beefy. You can tell like the actual handling of the wheel feels good. It's just the suspension you ride so low to the ground, you feel everything, you're very connected to the road. And that's what you want out of a performance sports car. All the controls are great. You know, you don't have a lot of on-screen controls. You have a lot of manual controls here. People are gonna love that. You know, obviously you can turn your traction control off, do all your different drive modes, electronic parking brake. These seats also, let's talk about that. These seats are really comfortable. I'm a big fan, actually. They're not as like grippy to you, the driver, as like the Corvette seats are. You're obviously talking about a vehicle that's for the most part less expensive than the Corvette. I think the Corvette like starts at 60. And obviously this Camaro's 58 and this is a almost top trim. But I like the ambient lighting. I like a lot of the look of the cockpit. Like the cockpit doesn't feel like you're driving an antique or anything like that, even though it's been around for like eight years, nine 
10 years in this generation. It's mostly the displays and the layout of things that feels a little bit dated. And you don't have like a lot of driver assistance features. You have cruise control. I don't even think it's adaptive cruise control. You don't have like any kind of lane centering options, which it's fine. This is mainly meant to be a performance type vehicle. So you wouldn't expect to have all that. Paddle shifters for manual mode, having a leather wrapped heated steering wheel is awesome. Super sporty, really like the look of it. But let's talk about three things I love and three things I hate. And we'll start with the things that I hate. First and foremost, I just feel like the cabin is outdated. I've talked about that relentlessly in this video, but it just really stands out. The display is here, the display here. It doesn't fit in the Chevy lineup, if that makes sense. Like if you were to get in this, you're like, oh, this is probably like a, what, a 2018 model? And you're like, no, this is a 2024. It doesn't fit in the lineup quite yet. So that's the first thing I don't like. The second thing I don't like is, this is kind of a love and a hate thing. It is so loud. Like all the noise coming from the back through the soft top, super, super loud. It's almost like I have to yell over it because it's that loud. And the engine is loud too, so that's part of it. We're gonna give it some more juice up here. I mean, it is loud, but it is awesome. Like it sounds mean, but it's loud. So I'll put that in the cons. And the third thing I really just don't care for is the visibility in here. Not only is it hard to see out of kind of a squatty or front windshield, but it's also an extremely squatty back windshield, really hard to see out of big A pillars. You just feel kind of like you're a wrecking ball in this thing. Maybe that's what people want. Not my preference though. It's, you know, really hard to see out of in certain areas. I could never daily this because it's just too hard to maneuver in and out. You have to be really careful because of the difficulty of seeing all the different areas. Even if you had like a 360 degree camera system like their HD surround vision or something like that, that would be more helpful because you'd be able to see when you're getting in and out of parking spaces and things. But this model does not have that. So you have to be really careful navigating in and out. But three things I really like about this car. First is obviously the speed and how fun it is to drive. And I like the sound of the exhaust. Like it sounds mean. Again, I'm not really a sports car guy, but I can respect it and it feels fun to drive and it's cool cool and you sound mean and you kind of you know, feel like you're intimidating on the road. Two, I really do like the exterior styling of the Camaro still to this day. I think it's great. I think it's aged really well. It's still got the super aggressive headlights and the super, you know, sculpted taillights. There's some things you could change here and there to make it feel a little bit more modern, but I think the design is kind of classic and timeless. So I think they've done a really good job with that. And I don't have a ton of complaints about the look of the outside. And thirdly, I'm a sucker for interior ambient lighting and the Camaro does it really well. It's interestingly curved around the accents on the door panels and things and you can do gradients on the ambient lighting which I think is really cool so you can kind of have it work its way across and look a little different as it goes across so it's really fun and you can do a lot of cool customization with it so I'm a fan of that I love interior lighting and the Camaro's had it for a long time I think I made my video back in like 2018 2019 on interior ambient lighting in here it's great but let's pull up here drop the top and let's rip it down the highway check out the turning radius on this thing it's actually impressive having a convertible must be amazing here we go If my hair was out, it'd be going nuts right now. That seatbelt is smacking all over. This is a perfect day. Perfect day to have the top down. 66 and sunny. Perfect. Well, that was fun. Let's go ahead and put her up. All right, guys, well, that's pretty much it here on this 2024 Chevy Camaro 2SS. $58,000, 455 horsepower, 455 pound-feet of torque. What do you guys think? Let's talk about it down in the comments section. Drop a like if you love the video, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button to be among the first to see every single new video the second I hit publish. We'll see you in the next one. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get out. Oh, God. Truly, I... Cut to the test drive. Cut to the test drive.